All right, I had to do some craft fixes, uh, re you know, fix some gimbling on the upper stages, but now I'm ready to go. I want to do everything in uh, one string of you know, videos, so I'm going to stick with these guys in this craft, or for good or bad, I might have to use a little bit of hyper edit. So I set the relative inclination. I'm aiming for the moon. So I'm just going to jump forward a bit in time till I match that. And if I blow past it a little bit, I'll just jump to the next day. Okay, getting there. I think about half a degree is as close as you can get. And and that's, as long as you can stay even near that, you're really good for a mission to the moon. All right, ready to go. Light up the engines. Cut loose. All right. So I'll start pitching down pretty early. So first, a uh, oh, little wobble while it corrects it to uh, time warp four. Okay, so start putting a couple degrees over. Yeah. I'm starting to head over a little bit pretty soon. There we go, and something I want to show off while we're down here is the lovely plume. Got the kerosene and the hydrolox plumes all together. And they'll they'll evolve, you know, the plumes will expand as you go up because you have less atmosphere pushing back and that has been very nicely modeled in real plumes. Okay, and I like to set this roll position as well because it looks nicer for staging. All right, so I'm approaching max Q, uh, dynamic, dynamic pressure. There we go, maximum dy dynamic pressure passed. Uh, let's see, I think, did I lose? No, I didn't lose my target. Good. So still, um, so I'm wandering off it a little bit. You can see the relative inclination increasing there. I just want to stay yeah, within a degree even is, is, is just fine. I usually kind of game all these numbers for kind of maximum benefit, but I'll be trying to balance them with uh, describing what's going on and everything as I go up. Uh, I had a pretty successful uh, attempt uh, just a moment ago that I had to toss the recording because uh, I exploded everything and I'll, I'll point out the time when I did that. Uh, there's a really nice effect that I believe is intended for the real SLS um, that you can do with a, a SSTU. I didn't think you'd be able to do it, uh, but you can. It's when these stage. Uh, but of course I broke something uh, by uh, staging something just slightly too early. Uh, and last time I was recording, the the city lights were flashing, but this time they are not. Uh, they weren't flashing, you know, any weird pattern. It was just r pretty regular. So I thought it was because we were near uh, sunset, but it doesn't. See that doesn't seem to be the case since we're near sunset now. Oh, I'm gonna go up just a little bit. Oh, and I did lose my target. Ooh. I just need to retarget the moon. Where are you, moon? There you are. I believe that happens if you click too quickly, which I'll often do in launching. Okay, let's see. So I'm approaching stage burnout, 15 seconds to go. Um, I want to target uh, an AP at burnout of pretty close to where we're heading, so that's good. Just a little lower. Ultimately, I want to do. I want to spend most of my time between 200 uh, to 220 kilometers, something in that range. So, with even such a heavy craft as this, uh, we still get to a pretty high um, you know, acceleration near stage burnout, nearly four Gs, and burnout. So, I like to see them stage off to the sides of our path like that, rather than one of kind of a, above me and below me is how I think of it. So, I'm um, happy with how it's going so far. So I want to push the AP up uh, a little bit, still. Not too much though, because uh, because it's so far away, because it's two more than two minutes away, um, being pitched up this much is pushing it off, you know, a, a lot. Um, even though my, you know, like as you see, my velocity isn't changing very much. My G forces are my, you know, uh, acceleration of my thrust is so low. Um, but because it's so far away, it's having a substantial effect. So usually I'll pitch down a bit early on like this as we approach it until I'm above, let's say, 200 or like within a minute and a half to a minute of AP. So I'll just 
kind of rush through this part of the time. Huh. Well, it kind of looked like the clouds disappeared and didn't come back. It's just really a crapshoot. I'm not sure whether it's the mix of mods or how close I am to, you know, to my memory limit or what, but sometimes, you know, the graphics will, uh, will agree with me and look nice, and sometimes they'll look crazy. The kind of jaggy, <laughs> The, the Jaggy Extinction coloring is uh, because I'm an OpenGL. Uh, when I, I'll usually run Scatter and not um, Eve RVE, um, it's because of uh, Eve RVE takes much more memory than Scatter does. And then I'll, I'll usually run DirectX 11. But to run all of this together, I need to run using the forced OpenGL. Okay, so it's 200, so pretty good. Uh, a minute away. And acceleration is now above a G, so it's all going nicely. Coming up, oh, uh, time to AP is decreasing a little faster than I was hoping it would, so maybe I need to pitch up just a little more. And how am I for relative inclination? Well, one third of a degree, really good. Very good. 40 seconds to AP. Pitch up a little more. I'm a little lower than I was last time, but often I find that actually works out for the better um, because you, you, you hit uh, AP earlier on, so you have to start pitching up a bit more aggressively like I am now, but because you're burning so much of your fuel at a lower altitude, uh, it ends up turning out for the best. As long as you're not like, crazy low, like because it's the, the difference between um, of, the, of the direction I'm burning compared to my the orbital prograde, you get some losses from that. Uh, it doesn't, you know, not all of the um, velocity you're generating gets translated into orbital velocity um, unless you're pointing right in the orbital prograde. So it's balancing of those losses. You know, you, there's no um, there's no key um, kind of winning strategy in any one direction or another. Which is why I like to hand fly these. Okay, there we go. So vertical speed. So I'm. Um, with this pitch, I'm kind of leveling off a little lower than I did last time, so that's really good. So I can pitch down a little bit. I've still got plenty of time until the stage burns out, a minute and a half. Uh, about a, you know, a minute more of burning time, I will start trying to push uh, my AP off, because I want it to be about a minute or so ahead of me, because the next stage has so little uh, thrust weight ratio. Not just at the start, but all the way through. It starts at point two, and I think when it burns out, after you've completed the TL, uh, TLI translunar injection, it's entirely empty. Uh, it is like a thrust weight ratio of 0.5 Gs. In comparison to, I think the Saturn V was like 1.2, something like that. Well, some, something in the range of one. Um, they did a lot of things to, to adjust that. Uh, like throttling back by changing the mixing ratio. Okay. So, oh wow, a minute and a half out. So pretty decent. Okay, and this stage burns out. So here's where I failed last time. So I hit once, so that does a whole bunch, drops off the first stage. These engines come out, and I have you know SAS and steering off, so they point right out. So what I did before is I didn't wait to drop this off until those engines had lit. And that was the problem, because that caused it to force through, force forward, and break everything. It was unfortunate. So jettison my side panels, activate some of my life support while I've got the time here. And so now uh, I just need to steer myself uh, into complete orbit. We're pretty close to it by delta V. Um, not as great of a situation as I thought I was in. If you look at my current orbital velocity versus how much delta V I have left. My goal, would, my, ideally I'd have 3300 meters per second left, but 3150 or something like that should be good. Uh, but if I'm, if I'm just a little bit short of that, um, well, I'll survive. So notice, I like how this plume uh, changes as you are, change your time warp. So here, I feel like I'm seeing like four or five different particle sizes as you know it expands and changes and goes away. And then as you time warp up, uh, alt, you know, and then chit, uh, ket, sorry. Uh, so here I've only got two. And then the one, and then just that last one. So it evolves through as you uh, as you go through time warp, and I really like that. <laughs> Even though I'm not really in pointed directly above my orbital prograde, which I usually like to, my relative inclination is still pretty good. It's really good. It's like one fifth of a degree off of perfection. I think this is the fastest I've got into orbit uh, recently as well. But I suppose I've done this uh, more than a dozen times in the last week. Because it's just a nice short thing I can try, uh, not too much of a time commitment.
compared to a lot of the other uh, Kerpa work I do, like working on realism overhaul. Okay, so, and I've hit AP. So now it's just kind of trying to manage uh, not letting myself fall too much. Three seconds out. So <clears throat> the numbers I usually look at in, in these cases, because there's so many, in this instance I watch uh, vertical speed, and because I know just experience of this craft, I don't want to let myself start falling more than maybe 20 meters per second. Not that I wouldn't mind being a bit lower, just because of how little time I have until this thing reaches orbit and how little thrust to weight ratio it has. I um, just won't have the power to level that back out without having to do something wasteful and aggressive like pitching way up. So around 20 there, good, now I'll pitch. Now you see my definition of pitching way up is, uh, you know, would have to be really high, like sometimes I've had to pitch to 45 or 60 degrees up to, to level this off, and that's I feel that's really wasteful um, and aggressive. This is kind of all the balance of, like a lot of the times and factors of this really depend on the altitude that you're, uh, that you're targeting or you're going to end up hitting. Okay, so I'm starting to level out that vertical speed, bring it back down. And I've still got a healthy bit of time until I'm in orbit to see my, um, by my orbit, you know, at minus a thousand kilometers. So still got a good little bit of time until I'm in orbit. Okay, so level that off at about here. I can see the vertical speed uh, is more or less leveled off. It's no longer going up or down really. And now, of course, as, my, uh, as I approach orbit and uh, my thrust weight ratio improves a little bit, I start heading up again, eight meters per second. Pretty close to orbit now. And I'm, I've got a lot of delta V, so it's actually pretty good. This is kind of the longest stretch of things that I have to all do right. Uh, so this is uh, kind of the first video in the series of actual actions, um, but uh, definitely the hardest to make in my opinion. A lot of the other stuff isn't too difficult to do. Uh, kind of all together, all right at once. It's like next we'll be lining up the TLI, and then uh, once everything's on the way to the moon, doing the docking and trans uh, transposition and docking of the Orion module to the Altair, an extraction, uh, and then from there it'll. I might. Uh, I'll have to do a little bit of uh, you know calculations of the timing, but that video might also include um, using the Altair uh, descent engine to break the whole. Uh, the whole project into lunar orbit, or that might get uh, into the video after that. We'll see how much time they all take. Of course, how my voice holds out. <laughs> all right, so um, approaching orbit. Oh, I probably shouldn't have been pitched so high, but that's okay. And this means that you know, my current altitude won't be at one of the won't be my AP or my PE. And not too bad for delta V either. Not perfect. I don't. I think I will have to cheat a little bit of delta V into this, but that's that's okay. I was kind of willing to do that anyway. And above 180, which is usually by minimum. And there we go. We're in orbit. Uh, thank you for watching. And the next video we will perform the TLI and then do uh, transposition and docking on our way to the moon with Bill, Val, and Bob. Goodbye. Thanks for watching.